Hey tribe, welcome to HGDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and I'm 29 from the United Kingdom and this channel of mine is documenting my journey as a crochet designer, making moments and memories. If you're brand new, hi and thank you so much for joining in with the tribe, it's so good to have you here and I hope you enjoy your time with us and if you are returning, hey 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 tribe, what's up, what's good, what's happening? So, a few announcements. Number one, just so you know what's going on, it is something to six in the morning. Um, I'm recording at this time because if I don't record now, I won't get a vlog or an episode a podcast out to you this month, this month, this week. And so because it's so early, my brain isn't quite in gear at the moment and I also have really bad earache so I can't stop this weird noise and sensation in my ear so if you see me doing this that's why um yes so today is the 2nd of November Saturday 2nd of November I have a really really like busy weekend ahead not even lots of things planned just a lot to get done um, and so I figured, right, let me sit and get this episode recorded now so that I know it's done and I can squeeze in some time, some time tonight to, to edit it and get it out to you hopefully for Sunday. Um, there wasn't an episode last week and that's because I had software issues. So I'd recorded all the footage but I didn't get a chance to edit it. I was going to release uh, part three and four of my tutorial which was about um, continuous join as you go and weaving in the ends on your project and so because of the software issues I couldn't edit that I couldn't get that out to you and it was really frustrating and I didn't want this to be the second week where you don't get anything hence the tired eyes and sitting here when I should be asleep um, and so I have also been reflecting on the podcast. I absolutely love the channel. I've been here for over a year now and it's since June this year I've become really consistent with my posting and um, so that I can get really good content to you and have a good balance of how much time I spend recording and editing, I am switching up the channel so that you get better content. Um, so usually my podcast is weekly. What I'm going to do is I'm switching that slightly so that there's two videos per month and the way that's going to work is I am going to at the end of each month sit down and do a vlog or a podcast whichever you'd rather like now um, and that will be a uh, more of a traditional podcast where I will sit, I will show you what I'm working on, I will show you um, all the projects that I've got through in that month. So there's a monthly recap and then also uh, looking ahead at the month to come. Um, so for example today I show you everything I've worked on in October and what I plan to work on in November. And then part way through the month, so sort of if you've got a four week month, week two, mid-month I will then post an actual vlog style video and in that video I will show you little snippets of what I have been working on um, I'll show you where I've been and little bits and pieces like that and that video will be more vlog and that will be me behind the camera rather in front of the camera so the vlog ones is the ones where I show you a little something on my phone I'm like tribe I'm working on this and I have to show you and then the end of the month is more of this sit down uh, setup, and that I feel a lot more comfortable with that. I feel like I can get a lot more great content out to you. Um, so I'm going to give that a go and see how we get on. I'm hoping that I'll still get a good amount of views and that you will enjoy the footage. I know some people really really love to have the videos on the Sunday. Um, and there, I do have podcasters that I, like, as soon as I see the notification of their vlog, that I'm like, oh, goody, 
let me sit and get comfy um so i'm just trying to think of ways that i can maybe um fill that but for now two videos i guess if you're really really missing me you can go back and watch some of the older ones maybe i don't know um so time today i don't have much time i'm sat here just having a little knit like i've got all the time in the world i have somewhere to be and i know i'm already going to be running late so i'm going to power through october as a quick recap um and then november's sit down will be much longer and much more of a knit with me style podcast October 2019 has been a whirlwind. It's gone by so fast. Um, it's definitely brought in the autumn weather, the chills, all the leaves on the floor. I have been wearing more layers. It's knitwear season. Um, it's quite funny because I love, love, love being wrapped up and layered, but I miss the sunshine and the daylight hours. So it's trying to get those two things to vibe but i am enjoying a slower routine 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 i'm enjoying a slower routine um i'm enjoying being snuggled coming home and it being like perfectly acceptable to put your snuggly pajamas on and fluffy socks and sit under a blanket in front of the fire and watch whatever it is you want to watch so I am fully embracing that and figured I'll just enjoy the season because before you know it, winter will be giving way to spring and then life starts to speed up a whole lot more. Um, yeah, Halloween has come and gone. I don't celebrate Halloween, but there's some big Halloween celebrators in my life. On Halloween, what I actually did was bundled up in all of the layers took a torch and went with my other half and took his two dogs across the pitch black fields for a walk and he bought me some sweeties and said happy Halloween and it was so cute so whatever you did I hope you had a good time and that there was some candy involved some sweeties um right I should I should but I'm not going to stop knitting on this heel so October I actually saw the start of October, I was away and I vlogged um, quite a bit of footage actually. I put together a really nice vlog on that one. Um, I think I called it Wild and Free. I did feel really wild and free. And whilst I was away in that log, lodge, dog cabin lodge, um, living such an amazing simple life uh, and being outdoors every day, I made myself a scarf which I called Adventure and it's here and it's already very well worn um, and I wear this every day so what I do is I put it on like this and when I've got a hoodie I do put the hood up to keep my ears warm and so oh, there we go this is my scarf now, I feel a bit silly with my hood up now. <laughs> but that's how I would wear it. Um, so this is my scarf, be called Cord Adventure. It's also a cowl, so I made it convertible and there are buttons, I think you heard them clink. There's four buttons that mean that I can undo it and wear it as a regular scarf or I can wear it as a cowl. Here they are. Can you see them? Yes. To be honest, I always wear this as a cowl and I have never undone it since I've had it other than to stretch it back out um, to sort of re-block it because, because I wear it like this all day, it does retain this more scrunched shape. Um, but I absolutely love this cowl and the colours, I'm so pleased with the colours and it really goes with my wardrobe, which is why I picked the colours. Um, so a quick recap, they're all style craft, you've got khaki green, um, walnut, then bottle green, this one is called, I think it's gold, and then this one was um, the style craft life, and it's the stone nep, and then um, I just got a generic black that, that isn't style craft actually to join, um, and it is a series of 40 granny squares that I have joined up and um, 
I've got the buttons to close and oh, it's been such a staple this month. I am so glad I, I made it. It's so warm and snuggly. Um, it's kind of like a blanket sat on your neck. I don't like to get a breeze across here. It also means that when my, I've got a hood, my ears are kept warm, which is great because of this earache that I've got at the moment. Um, and then, what else was I gonna say? The colors. So if you go back and watch the vlogs, you'll know that um, I picked these colors because it goes with my wardrobe. I wear a lot of black, khaki, and these colors really go. Um, oh, honestly, tribe, I love it. Um, and as promised, I said I would get this pattern out to you. Um, so I'm going to release that to my Patreon as a free pattern. Um, so all of those who sign up to Patreon will get access to this. Um, and then I will show you how to make it, how I made the buttonholes, and kind of how to make your own buttonholes for whatever buttons you've got so you don't have to go and buy any. Um, and I fully recommend that you make this pattern because it is so warm, so snuggly, so versatile. You can make it in whatever colours you like um, to go with your wardrobe and honestly it's just like a walking around with a hug um, and it's great on the dog walks late at night when it's dark and it's cold it just keeps that cold air off of you um, honestly I wear this zipped up with my coat like this just all snuggly um, I just love my granny squares I love being able to wear them so I'm going to get that released for Patreon. Um, Patreon is a subscription website where you pay a small fee. So I've got mine set to um, $3, which I think works out at about £2.50 um, per month. And on Patreon, I post every week and every Saturday usually. I post um, a, a regular post. It's called Inside HGDC. And I always cover off the um, whips that I'm working on, the progress that I've made, um, motivational quotes, um, sort of mental health reminders almost, just, you know, to be nice to yourself. Um, sometimes I post, within that post I put things, things that I've been binge watching or binge listening to. It's just a really good way to get your weekly fix of HDDC um, because I always post exactly what I've been up to and those posts, I really enjoy reading back over them now just to see how far I've come, how much I've made and done um, and it's almost a bit like another journal which is really really nice and I love sharing that with my Patreons. Um, so at the moment we've got a really nice small group and I feel like we already know each other and it's a really, really welcoming group. So every time somebody new joins, the girls are great and they're like, welcome. Um, so yeah, it's a really nice place to be. I post every week. And now that I'm switching to sort of fortnightly vlogs, I think if you're gonna want your fix of HDDC, that's a really good place. I always take really cute pictures. Um, and I actually put updates on there before they hit the channel. So. Any projects that you see here, my patrons already know about. Um, I've, like, I can't wait that long to show them off, so I have to take pictures and put them in there. So yeah, right, times are ticking and I know I'm definitely making myself late. So let's do a quick recap. Project one, project two is my granny square curtain. Now it's huge. It's amazing, it's huge. Um, I've been using this stitch marker. It's by Thimble and Thread, and it's a chocolate frog. And she's also just returned to YouTube, so go check her out. She has her own little cute studio. Um, it's total goals, and she makes such amazing stuff. And I am eyeing up one of her um, knitter carry-all backpacks for my 30th birthday in December. I think, I think I'm gonna treat myself to that. Hopefully I get um, a little bit of cash given to me as my birthday and that's what it's going to go on. Um, and I want the olive green um, and I'm thinking I want like the black zips. 
but then I saw somebody with like a navy zip no it wasn't navy but it was like a bluish oh anyway Thimbleon thread chocolate frog she also has a sorting hat stitch marker and then you can get your house like the initial of your house put on the bottom totally getting that as well um that goes on the square that I'm working on on here to stop me pulling out my progress um because sometimes I pick it up and I watch the squares fall off because I've unraveled my yarn um this I only have this many squares left well centers once I've put all of those on and sewn in the ends I'm going to do the tabs and then this is going to go up and it's going up in my hallway um it was originally going to go in here but I want this to be a really calm muted space and so I just decided this would be better showcased in my hallway um, and I'm thinking of making a matching door curtain I really really want to have the matching door curtain but I can't face making this in door length um, I would definitely switch from a three and a half mil hook that I've used here to a five mil hook to make them bigger and then also I kind of wanted it matchy matchy with this but I've used up a lot of this yarn it was scrap yarn that I've used for the centers I don't have those colors left so it won't match yeah but anyway that's another project that I've worked on throughout this month normally I sew the ends in as a go but I actually have like three ends three rows that need doing so it, it has stored a little bit I haven't really worked on it I think that's because when I went away at the start of the month I didn't take it with me I didn't work on it and I haven't really had the bug to pick it back up though it is so sparkly and pretty and I just feel like oh, it's not even showing very well I'll get you a little bit of footage of that and the other project I've been working on this month is socks cast on a pair of dotty socks by Emma of Potter and Bloom um, I say a pair I vlogged part of this so here's one Here's another one and here's another one three so originally I cast this one on and I was really pleased with it it's got a really nice design simple texture and the yarn I'm using is machine knit yarn it came on a cone and I've just wound some off uh, well two lots now so that I could knit I'm really pleased with them other than this one felt a bit tight and when I checked the pattern, the size small that I'd just gone ahead and made was actually for aged four to eight. And although it fit, it was a bit too snug. And I figured I'm not going to put all that work in for something that's not really going to fit me. So I took it off. I ripped out part of it. And then where I'd joined in more yarn, I just never unraveled it. So I've been walking around with part one. I cast that on on like a Saturday night. So I had the, a couple of rows to do in church. And then by the end of Sunday, I had the heel in. And then I ripped it all out on the Wednesday, when the, which was my next time to sit and knit. I recast on two. And I had this and this one on. And then this Saturday. Mm, I don't know. I think I, I did them Wednesday. And then... I've been working on like two weeks so then the next Saturday that came around I was back up at the heels and I put the heels in and there was a hole and I had a very dramatic meltdown where I just had a long long day and I hadn't really had time to knit and then when I did get around to knitting I had to unrip I had to rip out and undo what I'd managed to get done in the week which I think that happens to us all but they have to be right and I'm not putting all of that time in on my socks to then have holes or them not fit properly so as painful as sometimes it is I've got to learn to do them right so I had a bit of a meltdown ripped them off um, and I was like that's it I'm done I'm not knitting you knitters I'm not a part of this and then to calm myself down I put the sock back on and started knitting so I YouTubed a couple of tutorials to help me um, so I'm doing like the heel flap now and then I can turn the heel, I can pick up the stitches but it's when I get to the um, joining the heel flap to the front I always get a hole 
So I found a couple of tutorials and I'm going to give those a go. Um, and then hopefully that will solve my issue because in November I hope to get my own pair of socks made from a design that's in my own head and I'm going to show you the yarn because it's magical and then I'm going to have to dash because I know that I should, should have left the house by now. So I'm going to use this. It's the um, Socks Yeah by Coops Knits and it's this gorgeous grey and I think I picked this up when I went to the Fibre Lounge and then I'm going to hold it with this most amazing, I'm just quickly reading what it is, Shimmerette Silver Pearl. Oh my goodness, look. Look at my goodness. So I'm going to hold those together and I'm gonna make myself a pair of socks. I am torn on the design. Because it's glitter, I want it to be a simple, simple design. Because I'm really into cabling at the moment, I want it to be some mass complicated design. And that's just at war with me at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna swatch a little bit. Oh, look. I'm gonna swatch a little bit and then I am going to, um, Make my mind up and knit. I really want to do a version of my lacy fan sock, which has got the two cables and it's got eyelet lace at the front. Um, because I, I just sort of see these as more of a winter sock. So I, I was going to do more of like a moss stitch or a seed stitch at the front, like a textured stitch. But I think with the glitter, it might just be too much. And this would be better in a really simple knit. I don't want to do a simple knit, though my word is simplify. So I'm trying to come come up with some sort of design that is simply complex. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to practice and see what this is like with pattern um, and texture. I'm really looking forward to them because that's a really great neutral sock which I can... Uh, really incorporate into my wardrobe. The other project that I want to do is I want to make my niece, she's four, a jumper and I've got this Stylecraft yarn and it's copper. That's the shade number, copper. And I'm going to make her a jumper. Um, that's the Aran weight. I'm going to make her the, the flax jumper from Tin Can Knits. It's a free pattern. We also do it in four ply um, and I'm quite tempted to make myself one as well at some point. She's only Diddy so that shouldn't take me too long um, but before I start new projects I really want to get like, these socks off the needle and I want to get this done and hung up now. Um, I kind of see myself starting the door curtain and it not going up until this time next year. Uh, yeah, I really slowed my jam on that. It's because I didn't take it away with me and then my brain was pulled in other directions and now this is old news. I do really want to get it up, so yeah. So Tribe, that was a really quick hi moustache vlog uh, podcast. I am going to get myself ready and on my tummy, feed myself, crack on with my day um, and then I will see you all, I will see you all here on the channel in a couple of weeks time, mid November I will put up my um, vlog type episode showing you snippets of what I've been working on, hopefully I've cast this on, hopefully I've made my mind up about the pattern for this, um, maybe my curtain will be finished. Um, and these best be finished Whew. and then I will see you if you're a Patreon I will see you um, Saturday every Saturday for an update 
and you can also check in on my Instagram, HD Designs Crochet. I periodically, sporadically, randomly post on there as well. So uh, head along to those two to find me elsewhere outside of the the sphere uni universe stratosphere of HDDC. Um, and I will see you again soon. Thank you so so much for watching and I hope in the time before I, in the time? Word Heather, word. I hope that between now and when I next see you, you have lots of time making moments and memories. Take care tribe, see you soon. When your boyfriend asks you to sew the hole in his pocket and you can't help but personalise it with a little heart. <laughs> hey tribe, it's Sunday the 20th of October and it's about 8 o'clock in the evening and I just wanted to check in with you quickly. Um, as you can see I am working on a new project. I've just posted this on my Instagram stories, <laughs> so if any of you have been watching or like to look flick through stories, you'll have seen this. Um, I'm sat on my sofa, I've got a hot water bottle under here, and then I've got this fluffy blanket on. Um, I really really like my fluffy blankets and I actually have three fluffy blankets <laughs> um, but I didn't really use them because it annoyed me to have to fold them up which is so silly um, but since being away at the lodge and coming back fluffy blankets are the way forward and yes I hear you say you should have a crochet blanket on you and I am totally working on having a um, crochet blanket that will just go with this space but for now it's really nice to get some use out of this it's got the gold on it it's geometric it just really goes with the room I've got my fairy lights on and they are propped against my bookshelf so normally when I record I'm sat there so you can see a bit more of the bookshelf um, and then I didn't need the fire on but I've put a couple of tea lights, some candles, you can see the rest of them there. Um, and then I have over here got a uh, YouTube on. And I've just found a really cool little channel. It's not little at all, it's got a lot of subscribers. But she does really short videos on simple living and minimalism. Um, it's called Fairyland Cottage and they're about seven minutes at the most i've seen about 10 minute videos and i've just put them on like a playlist and i'm just watching loads of her videos about simple living sustainability zero waste and you know all that good stuff that i'm really into um and so i just wanted you to see this let me get it to focus for you so this is my dotty sock, which we are not focusing on. Come on camera. Um, I've made a pair of these already. Um, and somebody from church actually brought them from me. But I really, really enjoyed the pattern. Um, and I've been playing with my combed yarn. So all my machine knitting yarn. Um, and crocheting samples. And as soon as I got to this one, I just knew it was great for socks. It's got a really good thickness and I'm pretty sure it is nylon and acrylic mix. It feels good already, so when it gets washed, it's going to feel even better. Um, and I knew that I just wanted a simple textured pattern. And that's like the beauty of neutrals. It's just a real simple pattern, but it looks really great and it's really showing up. Um, but also, as I've been sat here working on this, I've been thinking about my lacy fern socks. So I don't know if you can remember, but I did start a pair of socks. And I think I showed you the pattern recently as well. 
in a vlog. Um, and so I just, I've got visions of moss stitch and cables and all sorts of goodness because I want more wintery socks, autumn socks and lace to me is more summer and spring. Um, so yeah, I've been thinking of that. Um, and isn't it silly? I've been toying with myself, like, in my mind I've been saying to myself, oh, I can't make another pair of socks out of this because I'll already have one pair. Um, I think that's just a little bit silly because I've got loads of this yarn. So let me show you. I caked 50 grams off the cone and there must be at least another 300 odd grams on the cone. I only need 50 grams to make one pair of socks for me. So I could get quite a few pairs. So I just thought what I would do is I'll make this pair. Um, I'm not sure if I will keep them because it's a little bit snug getting them on. I do think for me I'd be better casting on the larger size and then decreasing um, throughout the pattern. Maybe, I don't know. Or decreasing at the end of the rib. Something that I should I will play with at some point. Um, but I figured I'll finish these. They're working up really, really quickly, so there's no bother. Um, I can either decide to completely scrap this, but I would like to practice doing more heels, so I'm just going to carry on. I'm enjoying it. I started this, I cast on um, a couple of rows of the rib and then last night so that I could really crack on with this in church. Um, when I left church, I was about here maybe, and then I've just sat and put some more on. I'm actually almost at the point of adding a heel in, which is really good. Um, and are you seeing this? This is why I love this colour so much. <laughs> it's my sofa colour. My sofa is called Mink. So, yeah, I'm loving the neutrals. Um, but I figured it doesn't matter if I've got multiple socks in the same pair, in the same colour. I really like the colour. There'll be different textures. Um, I really would like quite a collection of socks. I might gift these socks, I might rip these socks down, so I'm not going to think too far ahead, I'm just going to enjoy the process for now. Um, I've got yarn there and it's great and it's really good for socks, so I will make socks. I could gift these to someone, but I'm a little bit concerned that if it's a bit tight on me, it could be tight on someone else who's got the same size feet as me. But I think it'd be better to get the heel on, on and then just really see how it pulls. Um, so yeah. So Dotty Socks by Emma of Potter and Bloom. And I am on my cosy crochet spot. I can see the label on my blanket. So what I'm going to do now is tidy up in here. Um, I like to put everything back to how it should be for when I leave a room and then I'm going to tidy the kitchen and quickly put the leftovers in a pot for tomorrow. I've already prepared my breakfast for tomorrow um, because it's back to work and I'm going to get my work clothes ready and then I'm going to relocate from in here into my bed, make sure that my hot water bottle is warm to get me through the, the night as well. It really, really does make such a difference having a hot water bottle and for anyone that feels the cold, I would really recommend it. Um, I've had the heating on, but just low, just to take the edge off the house. Um, I think it's set at like 16 degrees. If the house dips below that, then it will kick in. But I always feel the cold. So I've got fluffy socks on. I've got um, like a almost fleece lined hoodie. It's a really nice hoodie. And it's completely oversized. I'm actually wearing it as a dress at the moment. Um, with a cotton vest underneath. And then I've got um, this blanket on me and my hot water bottle. And I'm just so snug. And I really do feel like when I was in the lodge. And it's so nice and peaceful. And feels like a really good self-care Sunday evening. I feel refreshed and ready for the week ahead. So I'm going to tidy up. I'm going to do some journaling upstairs and a little bit more knitting. And then 
I'm going to like turn everything off. I'm going to turn everything off. So phone, electronics, um, and I'm going to read. I want to get back in the habit of reading before bed. Um, and then when I wake up in the morning, because I always wake up quite early, I'm going to have this next to me so I can put the heel on. So, yeah, feeling good, tribe, really good. Just wanted to show you that. I want to show you this, rather. <laughs> okay, so this is the first of a pair of dotty socks. I'm loving the colour. Can I just also show you this? <laughs> These are the colour yarns that I'm currently knitting with. Um, yeah, they're basically different shades of like a neutral beige. <laughs> so this one is Aaron for my Aaron cardigan and this is four ply for my socks. Um, and I kind of come to the realisation that I wear neutrals, but I love to make in colour. And so for the neutrals, I'm really like... For the neutrals, I'm jumping on the textured and the complex simplicity in the structure and the way that they are put together. Um, so you're going to see a lot more of that. But then I'm really, really enjoying the colours. And that's where crochet comes in, um, which is why I started a new crochet blanket. I've got two actually on the go. And I like to have... Um, like a riot of colour in my crochet. So I quite like that. That's how I blend my two styles. Because I do really love my neutrals. My calm. And that's what I would like to wear more of. But then I love the pops of colour. And so that would be in my accessories. And in my blankets. So it's really really cool. That I've kind of. That's just slotted together for me. Though I am going to. Sort of. It's not a rule, so it doesn't matter, but I will be making a neutral crochet blanket for in here. Um, I want it to go with the colour scheme. Though as soon as I said that, I was like, well, I could knit one in neutral. So maybe that will happen. But either way, I'm just really enjoying the making process. And I'm feeling really zen. I'm feeling really satisfied. And I'm feeling quite full in a good way I had a really good message at church today I've had a really good family visit and now I've made myself some really hearty food and I've got enough for tomorrow's lunch and I just sat here just reflecting on my weekend and the last month and the month ahead and I just feel really grateful so I'm going to go tidy up so that I can go and journal and add some of these thoughts into my journal. And I'll see you soon. Hey tribe, it's Monday the 21st of October and it's 20 past 11. It's way past my bedtime. I just had to, had to get on with this and I have to, have to show you. So this is my Dotty Sock by Emma of Potter and Bloom. And I cast this on on Sunday. Well, actually, no. I cast it on Saturday morning and I had a couple of rows for when I got into church. And I did the foot yesterday and this evening I've put the heel in. I just have to show you because it's the most perfect heel I've ever, ever made. Where is it going to show you? My stitches are so perfect and regular. I've split one stitch at the back here somewhere. Um, but other than that, I'm really, really pleased with it. Also, the joining at the side on this side has a slightly larger hole. So I'm not sure if I can block that out. I'm hoping I can because I'm not planning on ripping it back now. Um, but if anybody knows why that's happening and how to prevent it happening... That'd be great, and I'll have a look on YouTube as well. Um, I want to carry on, but my wrists are screaming at me, and I am really tired. 
So I'm going to get some sleep. But I just really, really wanted to show you. Like they're so regular and so perfect. And I totally get that you can't see a lot because it's dark. And I'm awkwardly holding it with one hand. But just look. Just look. At my heel flap. Only the slight thing that's bugging me, it doesn't really matter, is I should have ended the pattern here and started the heel flap. Instead I knit three rounds. I do think it looks just slightly weird because that bit of a sock is bold. But never mind, lesson learned. I mean I could just rip the heel out. <laughs> I'm not going to rip that heel out, it's the most perfect heel I've made. I'm just so proud of it because previously when I've done a heel and I've picked up the stitches let's see if we can focus along here where the um, V's are come on there we go along here where the V's are it's really loopy and an absolute mess and now I have another pair that I've been meaning to rip back for the longest time to redo the heels. Um, I am tempted to do an afterthought heel and rather than rip it all back, but I feel like I've passed the heel test. <laughs> My camera is so sleepy, it doesn't want to focus. I feel like I've passed the heel test and that's it now. I officially feel like I can gift somebody a pair of hand knit socks because I can do the heel. Oh, I just love it. I keep twirling it around and pulling this bit to have a look at it. Yay! So I'm going to get some sleep. Beautiful, beautiful sleep. And then no doubt when I wake up in the morning I will carry on with this. Because I want to get it to a point where I'm just knitting in the round, no decreasing. Um, so there'll be 28 stitches on the front and the back. So that when I'm in church, I can just knit. And I can concentrate on what's being said rather than the pattern. I just love it. I just love it. So proud of myself. One thing that has really helped is I had my notebook ready, which is here, and can you see I've crossed off the heel repeats and the gusset repeats. Um, so I wrote out 1 to 15 for the heel flap, crossed them off when I'd done the two row repeats, um, and then here on the gusset I've left it so that I can tell that I'm going to do a row two first thing when I pick it up next. Um, and that's just really useful because one, I was knitting really, really fast on this, faster than I thought I was that I was capable of actually, and my fingers were just kind of taking over and doing the the pattern, and I wasn't entirely sure how many stitches, repeats I'd done, so it's really handy to just have the tracker. Um, though I've now learnt to count these stitches. Um, and same with then the decreases, it's really useful to know which row I've just done without having to sort of pick this up and have this right up close and are you gonna focus? No, I think it's on protest, it's bedtime Heather, it's bedtime, shouldn't be recording um, but yeah, it was really handy having my notebook and just marking off the rows. So, let me put this to bed. Put myself to bed. <laughs> I just can't stop admiring it. And also how quickly it's worked up. Um, because I cast it on, as I said, a few rows of the cuff on... Saturday so that I could just sit and knit during the message and I think I came out of church and I was about here and then I had a few visits to do and by the end of yesterday 
I was ready to put the heel in and which I've done this evening and I haven't actually spent a lot of time knitting I'd probably say this is about four to five hours worth of work but I haven't ignored all my chores to sit and do this it's, it's been really feasible um, so I should be on the foot tomorrow which then means I will be starting the second one really really soon almost a little bit sad I didn't do two at a time um, but I will be doing two at a time on the next pattern okay I'm loving it kind of a bit annoyed that I stopped here though that is the start of the round because I just want to try it on I could try it on tomorrow. Right. This is your last look at the most amazing stitches I've ever done. It's my bedtime. Night night. Hey tribe, it's Wednesday the 23rd of October and it's about half past six. Um, I'm just showing you my sock. I've done so so well on it and I absolutely love the heel. It's the neatest, tidiest heel ever done. I'm so so proud of it. However, I've tried it on and it just is too small. <laughs> it is, like I can get it on but it's not going to be comfortable. So I've decided that I'm going to rip it back and start another, the next size. <laughs> And it's my fault because when reading the pattern I didn't check the sizing, I just went with the smallest size. And the smallest size is for aged 4 to 8, so no wonder it's a little bit on the tight side. But I just wanted to check in with you to prove that I had done some work. So I cast this on late Saturday evening, did a couple of rows, and I've done all of this since. Um, I'm loving the pattern, so I'm going to rip it down. I'm going to cast on two, I'm going to do two at a time, toe up, no, cuff down on the dotty socks. So let me get that done and we'll see how much we've got to show you. Let me put it against this so you can see it a bit better. I've got my afro putting a shadow everywhere, but I'm loving the texture, absolutely loving it. And as I said, the neatest heel I have ever, why does that tail always get in the way? I've ever made, look at my amazing stitches. There's only one slight hole here. And also this bit I'm not as keen on is where I've done slip slip knit, they are a little bit messy. So I'm gonna YouTube how to fix that because this side is very regular and very neat. Okay, gonna rip it off now. <laughs> 